My name is Clint Capiello. I'm one of the pediatric surgeons at Johns Hopkins Children's Center. I also have a practice at Howard County General Hospital. IBD is inflammatory bowel disease. This is different than IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. Inflammatory bowel disease comes in a few different varieties. The two most common that we see are Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Both do have an onset in the teenage years, some younger, but generally we see these kids after ongoing abdominal pain, weight loss, crampy pain, frequent diarrhea, and occasionally bloody bowel movements. Crohn's disease tends to affect the small bowel, usually the end of it, but may involve the colon or anywhere from the mouth to the anus. And ulcerative colitis, as the name implies, is usually isolated to just the colon. Patients usually don't tell their parents right away that they're having diarrhea, particularly our teenagers. So once this diarrhea becomes frequent, disrupts school, activities, sports, or the pain is so severe that they can't carry on as they normally would, or a bloody bowel movement, those folks usually end up seeing their pediatrician, who then be referred to a GI specialist, who depending on the severity of the case and the timing of diagnosis, will initiate medical management after a diagnosis, and then refer to a surgeon for definitive care as needed. For patients who have IBD, there's elective surgery and emergent surgery. Elective surgery are for kids who have a diagnosis that has failed to respond to medical management. For ulcerative colitis, that generally means you're moving the entirety of the colon. That then leads to two additional operations to restore bowel continuity. For children who have Crohn's disease, the most common problem that they encounter is a bowel obstruction from inflammation, usually in the end of the small intestine. Once they can no longer tolerate eating or losing weight, or medicine can no longer resolve the scarring that comes along with it, those patients are referred for operative management. So IBD tends to be a longer term problem than say simple appendicitis. These medications are used to induce remission and then long-term suppression. For children who don't respond to those adequately, surgery is the next step. That surgery generally um, will lead to a several day hospital stay, um, possibly longer if the operation is done under emergent circumstances. If your child has intestine removed and then hooked back up right away, you'll only see our laparoscopic scars and usually one around the belly button. For children who have complicated disease, they may temporarily have an ostomy. This is where we sew a portion of the intestine to the abdominal wall and a bag is placed to allow the bowel to empty while the rest of the bowel recovers. Children who end up with an ostomy generally don't have one for life. We have multiple options for restoring bowel continuity and removing ostomies, but that process may take anywhere from six weeks to three months. Procedures for inflammatory bowel disease um, carry a different prognosis. Ulcerative colitis, if the entire colon is removed, generally that is curative for the problem. That being said, we do leave a small piece of rectum to facilitate people having continence, and that small piece needs to be surveilled over time because there's a risk of ongoing inflammation and long-term cancer. Usually a GI doctor will coordinate that care as they move from pediatric to an adult patient. Crohn's disease, unfortunately, we say is not if you'll have surgery, but when. Even with our immune suppression, steroids, and immune modulators, most patients who have Crohn's disease will end up needing an operation for some complication of their disease process. You're really starting a lifetime relationship with those folks. 